so hey everyone i hope you are all doing very great and uh, the session of this ar has had been you know done very nicely and today we are doing our session 12 on school of ar and the topic for today is going to be tracking a texture to the hands and i hope it's going to be another insightful session for you all where you learn new concept and you can apply to make some realistic 3d ar effects so without wasting any time let me invite our you know mentor and the teacher for this ar workshop over to you navin sir thank you varun thank you so much a very good evening everyone i hope you're doing well um welcome to this week's first lecture it's going to be um we're going to work with hand tracker and um last session in the last session we did a lot of things with the hand tracker we did a lot of hand calculations we identified which hand um, is in action and which is not we also identified the angle between the hands and um, which uh, puts us in a situation where we can we can identify when there's one hand in the scene and do something and we can identify when there are two hands in the scene and do something so we can do that so we'll try to we'll try to put something in the middle of our hands and try to resize it and you know maybe put a different texture on that it can be transparent and uh, we'll do something like this today hi shaker very good evening aman hello chintan hi aman hi jessica all right welcome welcome to the session and um, well let's wait for a couple of minutes and meanwhile if you have any questions any doubts go ahead with them um meanwhile you type all right so i think today is the last date of the assignment today midnight is the last date of the assignment number 2 assignment number 2 and uh, i hope you have, i've seen a lot of you have already submitted the assignments and uh, some of the works are really incredible like i really love um, using them um it's it's give me immense pleasure it gives me an immense pleasure to see that um now we now we know how to put 3d objects into world space and we can we can move we can we can move them uh, we can resize them some of you can also are able to collide them as well which is really nice um to detect collision with the 3d objects so yeah great job keep up the good work and um, try to add additional detail as you can if your project project is already completed you have already done all the checkpoints in the assignment then spend some time to maybe optimize it you know how what can you do better to uh, make it outstanding you know make it outstanding from others so yeah go ahead and uh, meanwhile we are taking some questions today so go ahead and ask me questions if you have regarding the assignments regarding any of the workshops any question in general you can just uh, let me know okay could you brief about the catching this falling object game like what capabilities does it use and how do i approach the same okay shaker falling object game all right <clears throat> um i'm going to share my screen which you okay so i'm answering um, shaker's question shaker wants to know what do we want to do with the falling object game although yeah let's go with it so falling objects game is is there are like couple of couple of objects which are going to fall from the top and they're going to reach uh, to the end of the screen so what is my goal is that i need some elements here at the top of my screen and then i will change their position in the y unless they reach at the bottom of the screen because that's where they're going to be visible so for an example if i have a plane and if i have a bunch of plane like that so these four planes i'm going to have to scale them to 0.2 0.2 and 0.2 and uh, i'm just going to add um keep the position by default at 
minus 0.5 BP. We, we just want to make them like, you know, go start from the top. So this is where they're going to start. And uh, what I need to do is uh, I need to change their position um, one by one. So what I want to do is uh, first of all, play number one. So let's say I, if I have a loop animation to change the position of, of this guy when this goes to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, uh, okay, in, in, in three seconds, go from a transition. Okay, this is a three vector. This plane number zero currently at 0 0.03 in Y. And what is the right position that it will be visible to me and then not visible when it's gone. So it's going to come into the screen and then it's going to go away. Right. So I think, um, if it reaches, uh, if it reaches to, to minus maybe point minus point three, I think I'm thorough. So plus point three to minus point three is what, what I want to do. And this is, if this is the position, then it's going to just keep, keep running like that. So, uh, let's try to see. Okay. We don't want to change anything in X. Now you can see that, uh, this is actually falling from the top, um, to the bottom and, uh, Hi, I'm sorry about that. All right. Uh, so, okay. So this, this thing is falling all the time and coming at the bottom and same thing you want to do for all of your planes. And what also you want to do is that when this completes, when this loop animation completes, I don't want this to always into the, the, the same position. I want to change its position from like left or right. So I can see that, um, I just want to estimate what is the right position and what is not so this is zero zero this is like when x is zero this is when x is minus 0 0.8 and this is when x is plus 0 0.8 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this to that i'm going to use a randomizer patch a random number between minus 0 0.08 to positive 0 0.8 and this should happen every time the thing spawns, respawns, right? It respawns right here when the loop animation completes. And if that happens, then I'm going to pack this to a three vector where the three vector is, this is point three and And I also want this X, X should not be changed while, while it's traveling from top to the bottom, but it should be a new X should be assigned. All right. So I'm going to use again, one more pack. And uh, this is to where am I going with it? Like the, the bottom. So this is, this is my new equation now. And now you can see that every time now this, uh, this thing is coming sometimes this side and sometimes that side. So this is the plane. And uh, so now Shaker, understand this, that you have to do this, maybe create a logic whenever you're making falling object game, create a logic where you have to identify into like, let's say three, three different forms. Number one is spawning, spawning the, the items because we are reusing those items when they pass uh, pass to a certain distance and then it, it goes back to top and then comes back so this is respawning of the element any game design any game you do respawning is very important the second thing is the collision that you want to check so if there is there is some object which is let's say at the, this position so we have to match then when 
the both of their position is exactly the same using some tolerance you can use um equals if you use equals and you have to feed position number 1 and position number 2 to this like for each x y and just x and y um if that is the same you can put it always for like 0 1 so maybe like maybe if it is like nearby we will consider that as a collision so so we will we will mark that we'll make it respawn again if that happens i right? will make it go up so this is the whole idea behind it and the third thing that you need is score mechanism that every time so three things spawning collision and third thing is score mechanism that's that's all about any game if it is falling even if it's moving all the game uh, they work around that uh, i hope shaker that's clear uh hi saran somia is saying that i wanted to ask whether when we will get our assignment 3 to start work on um we will get back to you on that somia i'm not really sure what was the date but uh, your assignments are ready so we will we will let you know uh, i have responded to that in the chat okay thank you it was a little hard keeping the assignment effect in minimum size it actually totally depends on um, what object are you using you have to be careful about what objects are you using and then the problem should be okay um there are there are projects where you have to probably work with let's say uh, maybe more than 10 objects then you have to worry about this the, the size and we uh, we we know how to how to decrease the size of the mesh um uh, if not we will also cover that is it possible to have your email address sure bradley my email address is uh you will get this soon um okay i'm going to move to new question there's a lot of problems with the world template yeah maybe what what kind of problem are you facing if this is anything particular then we can sort it out um we can suggest you some ways where um it can be optimal for you if there's a there's a problem let me know what what kind of problem is there um can we take input text from user is it currently available i can see that option to be text uh what you're referring starring is for like editable text editable text is it works in a simulator but doesn't work on instagram or facebook so if you use an editable text um text then it's going to give you a capability problem that is it's not supported at the moment but you can if you want to just experiment with it you can obviously have it here um if i have a 2d text and i can make it editable if i make it editable i can just probably click on it and change it but it doesn't work um on capability support like it doesn't work on um if i let's say add it to my sharing experiences is going to say that it's not supported so it doesn't work uh, editable text i think yeah can we destroy a particle when it touches an object or something like if a particle touches the red line at the bottom it vanishes mm. well um of course that's possible but uh, not exactly the way way you were mentioning it to be for example like you're saying that what you want to do is detect when the particle actually touches um, touches the surface that's not possible because the particles are like too many particles and then the position and everything is like a uh, centered around something and they they follow from there to the to the end of their life span they emit from a point and they end when they reaches the then the life span uh, life span is over and they travel according to a speed so possibly what you can do is you can um 
you can just calculate that like okay this is my length so you can calculate what time and what speed you want to reach from the particle is emitting from there to reach to the red line and when it reaches the red line you make and make sure that it doesn't go away from there to make it more real what you could do is you could you could use a opacity fade that when when the particle lifespan is about to get over the particles start fading away so that looks more real that looks more in detail and also you can impl implement what you were talk what you're talking about to to do that i think um, there's a resource i mean uh, if we can't cover that like it's going to take a lot of time but uh, maybe i can share some help with you guys please post this question on the community so i'll i'll give you a resource there on the reskill community i'll i'll give you a resource there how to how to change the um the opacity when how to fade away the opacity of of a particle when it's about to life its life span is about to get over uh, i wanted to ask whether we will get an assignment 3 start working on because i have an exam on 24th 30th so i hope that's answered um clear clear all right all right any more questions before we go ahead um uh, anything top if you had let me know okay so um you have the link where we shared our um practice pad projects so if you have that link then you can go there and um, download the assets for our project for today there's this hand tracking uh, template sort of folder and then you can download the entire folder jessica says i want to replace a 3d object at a focal distance okay so i can walk close to it and audio it reacts and audio it reacts but it moves with the camera hmm so if i get closer it moves away hmm okay i think then uh, why this happens why this would happen why this would happen let's let's figure out why would this happen is that like um i have this setup okay and um, in this setup if if i put a 3d object if i put a 3d object on um, 3d object is let's say this um diamond of hearts and so you want to put it somewhere and then walk through it that means it needs to occupy a position in the world space is that correct so to do that we need to assign a position in the world space that that can be a constant position and our our phone our camera can move around it so to to able to get a position into the world space what we do is plane tracking all right that's what we do like we, we, we tell our camera to identify a plane a suitable plane once you identified the suitable plane the next thing we do is we choose choose a position to spawn our um 3d object there so i'm going to delete everything from here and uh, this in, this plane tracker this heart has to go all right and i can see that already that where the plane tracker is the heart is centered right there i'm going to make it a little bit up uh so that it's and i'm just going to make it to 3 and 3 and 3 also make it a little up so when the the plane is detected the bottom of this is at the plane if i keep it like this then this might happen that half of the plane is actually down the surface so it's good practice to keep it like this and if i do that right now there's no interaction um it's just going to appear anywhere uh, uh there's no position for it it's just going to it's it's just like a plane tracker which can be anywhere so i need to assign that position to this so i bring out this plane tracker into my pass editor and i tell that if i screen tap if i screen tap the screen tap should set the plane it should set the plane and uh the screen position 
should be the where wherever i tap okay so if i tap here it's going to set it like this if i tap here if i tap here tap 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 but i don't want this to happen all the time all right i only want to have make this happen once just once so to do that i think uh, you can use a loop animation like this and uh, make it like maybe 0.01 like it so right now in every 0.01 i'm trying to set a pane i'm trying to set a tracker okay like wherever wherever it um, i'm i'm trying to set a plane okay so now now what's going to happen is now it's not going to move too much your object is not going to move too much and you're allowed to tap once okay so when i do that screen tap so right now i'm not i'm not okay i'm still using the position when this happens when i do screen tap this should this should disable this okay so initially initially it's enabled initially it's off so initially it should be okay to find the uh, you know set the position to the tracker but if i screen tap that is the point where uh, post that i don't want any screen taps to register my position okay so this is the this is a new hack like you could do this way although it's not very much uh, recommendable because because unless you don't screen tap it's going to keep trying to change, keep trying to find the plane you know it keep trying to set that tracker all right so now if i refresh and if i tap i see that now i cannot tap anymore now because this is not enabled the tracker will not not executed now it, it won't be executed now so this is one um, one hack to do this although not a very recommendable way so this is uh, this is the option one to do this else you would need a script because right now or uh, there is another another way to do it quickly is that uh, since if you are developing a lot of games then when you respawning you will need that pulse you know with which completes the animation but you can't connect the pulse because like for an example if i if this is screen tap can go back to this again and disable it it would solve my problem but that's not practically possible right this is like if this pulse if i pass it again this is going to be like an endless loop right so there's another method called anti loop method anti anti loop because this is anti loop pulse that that we want to do that so go to the ai library and find an anti loop block this is another way to do it if you don't want to use a like a script or so you will find an anti loop block somewhere yeah this is for game anti loop block it's right here so you can import this block it's a very small block import it and uh, when you import it now i can delete all these and uh, i have to instantiate uh, how to use a block is that you have to right click and click on instantiate once you do it's going to be instantiated and then you can see there's an input to the block all right so that input is my screen tap is is that correct my screen tap should when i screen tap i sh i should tell this loop to know that hey next uh, tap should not be working so this is uh, this pulse to the block it goes then we this is the consumer patch we gave this block a pulse when when we wanted to screen tap and now we bring back this output that pulse from the block that means now we got the pulse back okay so now i can use this pulse to make it disable okay so i will use a switch again okay and now initially it is off so i want initially to be like my first i want to tap once so initially the tap should be working so i am going to use a not here so that it's going to be it's going to be okay to to um to do that um, so this pulse has to go here the screen tap now you see that i'll refresh the project so initially initially the screen tap is enabled but when i screen tap now this pulse goes 
goes to the block, comes back, and disables the the capability to screen tap. That means if I do screen tap now, it's not going to work. And you can easily move towards camera. You can see that this heart is moving when I'm I'm trying to go into that direction. So now now you can see that it's not moving with the with the camera. It's it's moving. It's not moving. Actually, it's static. The camera is moving now. So I hope these both methods are clear. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Jessica. I think that that's going to help you to achieve uh, what you mentioned. And um, yeah, I hope uh, there are two ways we we just discuss to solve your problem. And this is also very simple to use. I think this is uh, this is more recommended uh, than the last method because. we don't want that loop animation to keep 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 running so this is uh, this this logic is also useful into the games a lot of games and uh, it's very easy to do though like we don't need maybe maybe go inside this you know if you want to understand what's happening go inside this and uh, you'll see that um, when you go inside it there's a yeah i think uh, he has a method of uh, using bounding box not sure not really sure how is that implemented it... oh okay they 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 simply using a delay patch to turn it off and then send it over okay okay so interesting hack interesting approach to do it maybe you can learn that as well like what's happening inside it okay any more questions for the day okay we didn't miss anything yet okay all right so let's go back to our uh, projects where let's 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 talk about the expectation from today's tutorial um this is uh, me and um, what i want to do is uh, i want to this effect is does when one hand is detected is start zooming to an extent and the second hand detected there's a rectangle comes in the middle of the hand and it zooms a little bit like it zooms a little bit more and then it can be it can be bigger and smaller like you know this this texture based on my movement of my hands and i also see that this is uh, uh this rectangle this plane or rectangle in, in the middle of my hand whatever comes behind it has a like a different gradient uh, color printed on that so we'll we'll try to achieve this i think most of this we also covered in the last session so we're just going to build upon that um so you can open uh, the unfinished project from the link that you have already uh do you have the link have you already opened the unfinished project for hand tracking if you haven't uh varun can you can we pass this link to the chat to everyone so that they can access uh, the unfinished project okay uh, varun here varun uh, is going to just yeah use this link to to go visit this link and uh, find a project find a folder called hand tracking unfinished project uh and download this project it's probably one version 139 so you need to have version 139 to work with it and uh, let me know when you're ready so we can we can start with the scene understanding and then i'm going to give you like two more minutes to do that i think it's a simple thing just a simple project download from and um interesting
Praveen Saraswati, so sorry we missed your question. You wanted to know about camera texture. Okay, meanwhile, I'm just talking about camera texture. Please download uh, the folder and let me know in the chat when you're ready so that we can start. Um, uh, okay, Praveen, uh, let's talk about camera texture. So this is a blank project right now. It's a blank setup. Um, this is what your phone sees if you have no filter at all. If you, if you open Instagram and if you try to record a story without any filter, this is what the, the, the normal setup is. So this camera is looking at the scene and you're able to see it on a 2D screen. But right now there is no element into our scene, right? Okay. So this camera is this camera texture. This is camera texture. Whatever we're seeing here, this is camera texture. So I know this is camera texture, but how do we how do we take this camera texture and apply it on something? You know, like let's say this is camera texture, okay, but what is that object which is holding this right now? We don't have anything, anything in our scene. So we have a directly, directly, the, we have a direct view of whatever my camera is looking at. So what I do is if I take a, if I take a rectangle and I place over it, then what I'm doing is I, I got a scene. I, I got a scene object, which was a rectangle and that is overlaid. Now that is the only thing which is in my scene hierarchy. So that means this is overlaid now. Okay. So this is, this is what I see. My camera is still able to look through my camera, but I am not projecting that texture anymore onto my screen because my screen is having this rectangle. So, so it's a good idea to use this texture and project on something. So that is why we take this camera and extract the camera texture. Okay. We, we got that ex extraction. This is that camera texture now. And now we can assign this camera texture to this material. Now this is again the same setup. Only difference is the camera texture is being held by this rectangle. Okay. So now I can, I can probably do something on this. I can change its color because now it's being held by, you know, by this camera texture. So I, this camera texture can be modified now because this is held by one of the scene object whose properties we can change properties being length, being uh, width, being scale, uh, being color, you know, and all the, color, all the color properties. So this is what camera texture is. Is that clear, Praveen? Okay. I hope uh, that's understood. And uh, all right. So Everybody, uh, you can, if you have already downloaded the project, then you can open the unfinished project. And uh, once you open that, let's, uh, let me, let me try to make you understand the scene understanding. Okay. Like if you get a project, if you, if you, if you try to look at one of the old projects that you worked, like, let's say three months old or two months old and you open the project, it's not necessary that you remember everything. Okay. So what we should do is we should have a have a scene understanding you know like how we are understanding the scene so although we do this uh, in every every day's project uh, but uh, look at my method how how i look at things so i first look at the scene hierarchy and i look at okay there's a there's this camera this focal distance there are no lights in here that means this uh, this filter is probably right now is not reactive to any 3d lights so it's only 2d filter Okay. That's, that's what is making sure there are no lights. So, okay. And in the focal distance, in the focal distance, there's nothing in here. This canvas is also outside. So you can put it inside the focal distance. Um, okay. And, um, inside the fo focal distance now. Okay. Inside this focal distance, I have this, uh, rectangle. I've put a rectangle in the middle. And uh, this rectangle has uh, visibility is somewhere check is when, when the hand. So now we are going one by one. Okay. So we went to the uh, scene hierarchy. We found this, uh, there was a canvas and then there was a rectangle and the rectangles visibility, its position, its scale and its rotation is being held in the patch editor. So 
let's remove them let's remove uh, everything you know like uh, let's try to not remove let's go one by one so this visibility is when this is a hand finder hand finder hand finder is going to give you the number of hands like if it is index number 0 then it's number one hand and uh, we discussed in the last one like the hand bounding box gives you the five points 1 2 okay let me disable this guy first so that doesn't come number one like this if this is the hand then it's going to draw a rectangle over it and this rectangle will give you that four points number one top right uh, top left bottom right bottom left and the center of this and based on those uh, points we will do sort of calculations like where to put our texture where to put our model uh, or a 2d object as well so uh, if it is exactly number 2 then then we will make that visible all right so so right now we are understanding the scene and um, in that understanding we found out that okay if there is only one hand then this rectangle should not be visible but if there are two hands but if there are two hands then this rectangle would be visible okay so one and two all right so you can see this exactly this uh, hand count this is number one hand and now two hand if this matches number two it's going to be true that means it's going to make this visible all right it's going to make this rectangle visible so that's okay that that you um we're putting the rectangle in here and but um, the the width of the rectangle is one one by one we set it by default one by one and um, okay smaller and then we scale it so we scale it later based on based on the distance between the hands all right so sorry okay now this is the same number 1 hand number 1 goes to hand select if it is index number 0 i'm going to pass that to my hand bounding box that hand bounding box will give me five coordinates coordinate number where top left top right bottom left bottom right and the center and also the width and the height of the total width and the height of the rectangle so for us the useful information was the center hand center all right so from the center the center you can see that the center and his this is also in the center so this is where we are placing it if we move it to somewhere else like if you put it like that then you can see that now it is now it is going beyond my hand all right so i want this hand number 0 from the center so you can see that so this is nothing but this is just uh, determining okay hand number 1 hand number 2 if it is hand number 1 then give me the center position if it is hand number 2 then give me the center position and if both of the hands are visible if the total number of hands are 2 then make my rectangle visible all right pretty easy until here we got that scene understanding and this is also we remember from the last lecture that we took both the positions and we did some hand calculations and we did some angle calculations all right so that was pretty simple hand was uh, if if the if the position of this this hand is greater than the position of this hand that this is going to be my right hand and this is going to be my left hand so this is how we determine the position of uh, the, to which hand is it after we determine that this is left or this is right we we calculate the angle by using our uh, uh, arc arc tangent and simple like we, we take the position of um, both the hands subtract it the difference we get the difference and we see that the difference is at what angle so what angle is that making from this particular uh, point so pretty simple we converted that to um degrees from radians and after that we just multiplied it by minus 1 because there was i think we did discuss this last lectures there's no point of repeating it and then this was the the angle that we getting in the z so this is how it's working all right now now i have a better scene understanding i understand like okay what is what is there in the project what is happening i know that this is the main task of this guy is just to find hands and there's nothing else and the uh, main task of of these guys 
is like right between hands is uh, to calculate the angle and also to see like what size of the rectangle should be all right so now let's do our tasks one by one now my task number one is to is to increase the um increase the the angle of uh, sorry the increase the size of the camera texture so as the uh, praveen just asked a question about camera texture and uh, i think this is very very good that we were here and we're going to use this in 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 the hair now so right now i can see myself i can see the rectangle and everything my project is working okay but if i want to make myself bigger i need to access that camera texture okay so i need to i need an object to hold this camera texture first all right if i don't hold this i'm i won't be able to make any operations on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new rectangle okay make it go all the way into the x and all the way into the y because we want the camera texture to to be held in the full screen i'm going to call it a uh, rect camtex and call it camtex when i call it camtex uh, i'm also going to assign a material to it and this material is going to be mat camtex all right and this is a flat material and now i need to pass a texture to this so there are two ways to pass a texture you can directly just assign a texture so there is no texture here what i want a camera texture so i'm going to go to the camera and when i'm going to extract that texture all right once i extract the texture it's going to be right here in the textures um, it's uh, it's down here you may not be able to see this because of the my but it's down there in the texture as camera texture zero so i can i can drag it in into the patch editor i can also also assign it directly in here but i'm going to drag it in here because i want to make some operations in here so this is what it is right now now you can see that the whatever the camera is looking at is is there now in the background in the in the viewport you will be able to see the that there's a there's another you know there's this this i i know that my hand is moving but there's this this uh, rectangle that i'm not able to see is because that my camera texture is rendered first so whatever is happening with the rectangle is in the back of my camera texture so to fix this it is very simple just put this render order just up so first camera texture and then this rectangle all right that's that's all now what i want to do is uh, whenever whenever my first hand is detected so how do i know my first hand hand is there there are two information that i get information number 1 when there there is one hand it becomes this count becomes one all right this becomes one another information that i have when this comes it comes as a track is tracked okay because this was index number 0 and it comes as this track becomes enabled okay so this is also i can use so i can use this uh, pulse and i can say that it gives me an animation when when there is whenever this is tracked on then make make this make some sort of transition to make this bigger all right to make the camera texture bigger so what i'm going to do is i'm going to play an animation and when this is off then reverse that like if hand is out of the way then go to go back to the original position that's what i want so i want to have a transition this transition is going to give me a vector 2 because that's what our x and y is are so initially i'm going to be at 1 and then i i have to change this number to a new x number but what is it that we are changing so this is our camera texture right now this is what we want to modify this is what we want to transform so when we say we want to transform so we have to bring this patch called texture transform into the patch editor when you bring the texture transform into the patch editor right now the transform number is 1 so it's going to be same as it is uh, okay but now i'm going to change the scale of this transform okay so to do that what i have to do is um, why why am i so big okay so i'm going to use a 
2D transform pack. 2D transform pack is like basically all the transformation in 2D possible rotation, possible translations, possible scales and rotation. And the pivot point is just like from where, from where do you want to like apply everything to that uh, object? So right now we go like, okay, 0.5, 0.5, that like I'm right in the center from it. So if there's a scale like by 0.1, then everything's going to scale up from the center perspective. All right. So um, the scale is something that I want to change. This is my transform. And this scale is what I want to change. So initially it has to be one. And then I'm going to go to 1.3 and 1.3. So this is what should happen when it, it comes. Do you see that when it goes away, it, it goes like you look at the scale, okay? When this hand comes, this this is getting bigger because of this this uh, transformation. <coughs> Sorry. All right. So now we now we know that um, this is working. This is working, and when I go back. Uh, it's also working. So what I want to do is again, um, this is a little bit uh, like a this process has to be like a smooth process. So what you can do is you can add an exponential smoothing just before the scale. So you can drag it a little bit on the side and you can say that, okay, unpack this guy because exponential smoothing, we can only apply one vector at a time. So now we're going to do this exponential smoothing by 200 and I'm going to apply this to number Y as well and X and Y and then I'm going to pack it to a vector 2. And just give that scale to it. So now it's going to be smooth. Now this, this transition is going to be smooth, right? It's going to be smoothened by 200 damping, okay? So this is uh, this is all it is. This is the the main logic to do that. Also, um, yeah, this is the main thing. This is taking one second. If you want it faster, maybe point five. This is going to be a little faster. Maybe point one. This is going to be super fast. You know, like maybe we'll keep it to one. Um, is there any question so far? Uh, by understanding this camera texture and how we are using this 2D transform pack, it's a very important patch. This is this this these two patches together are the most important patches in the. I think uh, when you're working with anything, because we modify the UVs, we modify the textures, we create distortions and noise uh, mo uh, movements. These two textures are these two patches are everywhere. They're they're like they're like you know they're like cockroaches. They're present everywhere. So these patches are very important as well. Unlike cockroaches, they're not important. But these are very, very much important. I'm going to go through some questions uh, if, there, if there are any. And then meanwhile, if you understand this, that's OK. If you have any questions, let me know. Your uh, main webcam output is a bit zoomed in it. I can see you face, but not hand gestures. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure why is that happening. This is the problem that was there. Uh, few years ago, but now it's again. So OK. Um, so is it possible to attach? If you want to look at the hand gestures, possibly look here. OK. Is it possible to attach a light source to the rectangle object so that if you're using metallic face mesh, it will reflect the light produced by the rectangle. Mm. Mm, no, it doesn't work that way. Reflection doesn't that work that way. Uh, um, is it possible to attach a light source to the rectangle object? Light source attached to a rectangle object? No, no, that doesn't make sense. But uh, you can attach a light source in your project and uh, that light source can affect your scene objects if they are they are reflective then it will reflect if they are not reflective then they won't, won't, it would not if they're shiny then it 
the, the light will you know shine back so it's possible of course but not to attach to an object you can use a light source any light source that you want and then um then reflect on the or your physically based material simple to do that like you know this is um, this is your light uh, we don't have any lights in this project but so you can add some light sources like there are spotlight there's point light uh, there's direction light and there's ambient light so any of these lights you can um uh, use to um uh, uh, you know cast rays rays of light on the 3d object or a physically based material to be honest okay no questions in this that that means so uh, good all right now um look at this quad gradient patch squad gradient patch is a is a patch from the library and uh, we'll quickly go through what it does um, there are like four colors into this and uh, we can pass four colors into this and then these four colors are being mixed based on the based on the, the size of the rectangle that it's going to assign from like a like so everything is from 0 to 1 like we we go from um here to here that's 0 to 1 we come from here to here it's also 0 to 1 so what we we do is here that we take the upper left uh, upper left color and the lower left color okay so consider this example all right this is my upper left and this is my lower left okay then i'm using my y my y to you know i change that so my y is zero here at this point but it's going to be higher higher in here and it's going to be higher high like it's going to be maximum in here so this mix this alpha is this also goes from 0 to 1 this alpha also goes from 0 to 1 when this would be 0 it's going to be mostly the upper left color and when it's going to be 1 it's going to be mostly the bottom left color so um, same similarly it does for the upper right and the bottom right and uh, then the outputs we mix when we mix it in the x uh, x direction so we distribute those colors like okay uh, vertically you have already aligned them and then then from 0 to 1 we mix them so maybe uh, doesn't make sense with words but uh, let's try to see what is it giving us so we use shader and a pass and just look at look at the output of this guy so you can see that um this is my upper left and this is my upper lower left this is upper left and lower left and we mix this from 0 to 1 right so when this was 0 then this color would be 100% but when would this will go on the upper side this color will take place when this is exactly 1 then it's going to be this color similarly upper right when it is exactly 0 this is going to be the same color when this is exactly 1 is going to the full yellow all right then what we did was we did another mix okay then we took that color and we did another mix that okay color number um the left colors and the right colors so we mixed them also so when this is exactly zero here and this is exactly one here this is the mixture of all the colors in the center like they they they're going from left to the right like zero to one so zero to the one All right, so that's how that's how this is being made. Um, so you can use. We also, I also introduce one more method to you guys to do this. The same thing is that you can use a gradient. All right, and then you can also use a gradient step, and then you can use couple of gradient steps to, like, okay, zero to zero point five. I want one color, and then. 0.25 to 0.5 five on another color, then 0.5 to 0.75 five on another color. So this is start and end rays, and you can use couple of these in combination to achieve the same result. But this is a very very good and smart way to do this. Like you know, it's very smart way to do it. I think um, um, we are using this the x and y coordinates to change the colors. So I think it's pretty smart way. So I think we let's use this one and let's see how this goes. so my rectangle between my hands is my rectangle this this is the object this is the material to it so i'm going to bring back this material to a, to any here directly and i can see that this rectangle is now have those colors on the corners and the bottom is a mix and the corners are the 
the colors are most bright when as soon as they go away from the corners the colors are fading away and then in the center we have like a good mix of all those four colors now i can i i'm going to reduce its opacity to about 50% so i can see that myself from from this and i'm going to make the blend mode to add so that the bottom the, the behind of of that color is being overlaid so now we can see that now it's been changing the like whatever the color is at this point so it's going to it's going to overlay on myself so now i can see that now i can i can kind of like put a reflection or put a, like a mirror so this is like a i don't know maybe a colored glass in your hands which is you looking through that so good effect okay so i got this fixed i got this fixed the only thing is that i want to zoom it again when the both hands are there i want more zoom into the system that means where do i go for that is that like whenever there is there are two hands whenever there are exactly two hands then i want more zoom okay so when this condition is true so i'm going to create a sender for this and i'm going to say that active underscore two hands this is my variable very much uh, this this says that okay when there are two hands are active this is going to be true so i'm going to make a receiver for this and uh, i'm going to use this receiver in the upper section of the project and um, just to make some space here i'm going to just push it a little bit up so this was an earlier logic whenever there was hand number 1 was detected we were um, we were making some animations and that was to increase the size of the of the camera texture all right now we want to increase size to more like earlier we were going until 0 0.13 1.13 1 sorry 1.3 now we want to change that to a larger number so i'm going to use it if then else okay this is a vector 2 and uh, i'm going to say that if this condition is true if this is true then they go to 1.6 all right if it is not true then 1.3 is okay so if that is the case then i'm going to keep it here okay and since our uh, we have like a like a smoothing factor already here so whenever it shifted shifts from 1.3 to 1.6 it's going to have that smoothing effect to us you know like you see that this that smoothing effect so now there are two zooms zoom number 1 zoom number 2 and there's a texture in my hands is there any doubt is there any questions so uh, in the setup uh, do we understand the capability how how are we making sense of the scene objects and putting them between our hands and uh, so do we understand this already let me know if you have any questions we we are we are actually done with the concepts so we can take some questions now Okay, I think I fixed my camera. At least, um, no more questions. Do we understand everything? That's that's so nice. Although it's nothing, um, nothing so hard about it. Everything is pretty good. I think very simple concepts in here. The things that we're doing. Um. Yeah, go ahead, guys. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead. Uh, keep talking. Share something. Um, meanwhile, if you don't have anything to share, I have something to share. I can I can share something that that's something that I'm working on for the competition, and I think everybody's working as well. So, so but I'm gonna share something that that I was working on. So probably meanwhile 
you can write your questions um remember there was this uh, project i was i mentioned about like i'm going to make some pipe and make some water coming out of that pipe and then uh, so that this is what i made i made this i made this pipe uh, this pipe i didn't make i make the i make the the water and this water puddle at the bottom and this is uh, just some um some particle emitters which are working on that and uh, if you see the total project size is 1.4 mb and this is not not much um this is reflective uh, i still have to work on this there was there's a lot to work on on this project i hope i'll i'll be able to finish it um soon uh you don't see anything in here because this is like a depth effect so the depth is not supported by the simulator so there's nothing visible in here but when when you put this into like a paper, part of a plane tracker so this plane tracker is situated uh you know like this entire setup is situated inside the scene and then the water comes out and if if it is blocked by something the water only seen where it's not blocked so but i'm going to i'm going to make more advancement to it by just like something if it gives you some sort of inspirations for your projects um so i thought i i wanted to share that uh how did i make it is uh, i use lot of lot of lot of lot of noises so those noises are this 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 uh this, this fluid this noise which is giving me the 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 normal this this details this these details you see that sort of folds of water as i'm getting from this uh, noise and this another noise uh, this liquid noise i'm not using the liquid i'm using this voronoi nodes these voronoi nodes are creating this uh, you see those dots are coming in and these dots are also coming in from the pipe as well well because of the pipes uh, pipe has a different uv and um, this uh, water pool has a different uv so that is why like this is stretched and this is not stretched and also this is stretching makes sense because this is liquid and um also coming coming from like a like a water funnel so i hope uh, there's nothing else there's some details is the particles i think a um, lot of distortion that i have to do but uh, yeah so i created a patch called like i'm using that patch to like noise movement and this there's another patch is called um this is one is normal normal movement and this one other another is like the noise uh, movement i can adjust the speed and i can i can do this so i make like a control unit like this so i don't have to go inside everything so i can just do things from here i can make it like a 200 by 1 i can make it like to go like the water like this and i could make it to go like maybe a little differently maybe they make it like this as well so i could play with this these uh, these things the way i want because of the i set up the sender and receivers so for now i'm going to just make it yeah so this this was something that i was been working on then you can increase the speed of course like the how much you want how fast is the water how slow is the water so okay um can we place a 3d object between those hands Oh yeah we we were doing that last time as well right so yeah you can you can you can place a 3d object but you have to you have to do some calculations um to convert those um the focal position you know what one way to do this since it is the scale so whatever it holds is going to be increased so let's try to put a 3d object you know 
let's try to put a 3d object in a way that that we think is right so um i'm going to go oh we already have no we don't have we have a heart diamond where is that diamond uh, okay heart primitive so let's try to put this uh, this 3d object heart uh, to the middle of the hands okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a Uh, it's one and the same thing. If you use a sphere and a heart, it's one and the same thing. So I'm going to use a heart for now. So let's say this is the rectangle between hands. So this is going to hold my my heart. So what I want to do is I want to fix the project into a custom render pipeline first. So so that my 2D objects, my 2D scene objects can hold a 3D object as a texture. Okay. So we did this uh, previously when we were working with particle systems, and we wanted a three D chair to be a particle, so we could do that here as well. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I want to have a null object which holds this uh, uh, this three D object. So this three D object is here, and I can see that three D object. And this is, uh, let's say, we're going to call it three D. So this 3D, I'm gonna just uh, this 3D, I'm gonna separately use in a send render pipeline. So this is the scene object, and then I can see that this just give me the the heart as an object. So I'm gonna make it like a transparent. And uh, now this uh, this rectangle has a texture. The texture is given by this. This thing here. So what I'm going to do is instead of uh, instead of giving this texture from from this quad patch, I'm going to assign this texture to this uh, this the hands between the the thing. Okay. So if I do that, if I, I probably have to use a shader underpass between, and then then I can see that the 3D object is in the middle, but it's not exactly the way we want it. And also that this is visible, so we need to change our uh, pipeline a little. So to do that, I have to use a custom pipeline. So this this is what the the canvas. What I want to render is is my user and my hands and the object in the between between them. So this is my pipeline. To be honest, seen the underpass. Um, I'm passing both the both the canvases, so uh, you can see that canvas is visible in this. Excuse me. So this is, um, and I'm gonna use the devices render output, and that that's what it is. That that's what the entire output is now. So I don't see that 3D object anymore because it's it's not it's a part of my. Um, Part of my hierarchy now, because only thing that I'm rendering is the canvas. There's nothing else. So, I what I want to do is um, okay. So this is the material between the the for the for the rectangle. So I'm gonna put the opacity to 100 and also put it to alpha now. And uh, this uh, seems a bit. Uh, stretched to me <coughs> that means we have to make sure make sure of its um, because we are expecting it to be a, like a like a square but it's, it's becoming like a you know like stretched texture so so what we can do first i need to make it like a shader and a pass and um, use this to to change this texture, yeah, this is where we are change it. So this texture is uh, stretching a bit. So I'm going to use a texture transform. This is the same technique that we do with the other methods. So this is how we can do this. And then I'm going to use a 2D um, transform pack. Again, this is so useful. Everywhere we go, we find this patch. 
So for this, we, we want to have a, a ratio of our device. So we won't have the ratio of device. So we go to a device, we bring it back. And uh, <clears throat> this is my size. If I divide it, I get the resolution. So this is my practice. Every time I open a project, I do this first. This is the first thing I do. And I like to do every time manually. I, I have never like created a patch. I created a patch, but I'd like to do this manually. It gives me that warm up, you know, like when to start the project. So I'm going to use a um, unpack here to a vector two. And this unpack is going to give me the ratio of how big and small this is. So I'm going to divide this by this. And then this should be like a sender. And this is my aspect ratio. That I can use here. We can make some space to a project. This is sort of, we're not going to use it again. So just going to keep it. So this aspect ratio is if my x is 1, so I have to pack it. If I my x is one, then my y should be half of it. This is the the ratio that we have decided, and we're gonna multiply this to make it bigger or smaller, and then that's going to be my scale, and that's going to be go to my transform. So I can now see that this is uh, even worse. I don't think we need to transform this because what we have taken is one comma one in the rectangle is one comma one. Oh, so if it is one comma one, then it, it is always be square. So we don't really need this, but good to get it ready. And I think we can just make it bigger or smaller. So this 3D object is my heart. So maybe I can make it like five times bigger. So now it comes to my hands. So 3D object is is coming into my hands. But <clears throat> remember, like, okay, this is a 3D object. Now we're rotating and everything. But this is this is not the actual 3D object. This is the this is a rendered image of a 3D object. Okay. So to to make the 3D object dance between your hands, you probably have to like convert the position position um, there has to be conversion from focal dis focal coordinates to uh, screen coordinates. So I hope this is this is clear. There's this way to do it. Um, there are a couple of steps into this. The first step was that I know that what I'm rendering, I ren I'm rendering my canvas to my directly to my device. All right, this is my main render line setup. Then what I did that <clears throat> the second of the second rectangle out of these, the texture is I'm getting from this. Okay, so I I got that render pipeline separately, and I diffuse that texture to my rectangle. So my 3D object texture is is this now. Okay. Uh, let's let's save that calculation for some other day for to conversion to the conversion from focal to focal to um screen coordinates we will do that actually one day we'll just do the con con uh, conversions only so yeah we'll take the probably the same example is there a way to detect uh, finger gestures no no propane you can't detect the finger gestures yet but it will be soon um in spark air So, where to create 3D models? 
why to create you want to create 3d models there is this program called blender it's open source and uh, this is where i created my water pump like this um if you see this is the water pump that i created so you can also use this <clears throat> it's very simple to create by the way what i did is where i created a a normal cylinder until here then i subdivided it to couple of like <clears throat> these uh, edge loops like from 5 and i created more and more and more and more and more uh, let's try to open a blank project so 3d to create 3d objects you go open blender and there are plenty of tutorials on youtube how to use blender so you have to again i would emphasize on that you have to just need to know basis like how much um, how much you have to know is is how much you need to know okay if you want to go ahead uh, with the 3d learning is you know you can go ahead and learn become a master but we are learning a program spark as studio for now so the blender knowledge is is okay to have like need to know basis so so like you can start working with the, there are like a lot of uh, modifiers it, the viewport is quite similar to spark like every 3d tool has like a similar viewports xyz axes and there are like couple of uh, different meshes in here you can do some sort of um calculations on these yeah go go through a lot of tutorials in uh, youtube and you'll you'll learn this very quickly <clears throat> what inspires you for the spec uh, for the hackathon the the inspiration is uh, actually i i was learning something i keep learning and i was learning to make make this water and waterfall and like you know so <clears throat> this was this was this is very easy to achieve in unity but in spark it's like a like we we don't have um we have to convert few things before make it work so i was just trying to learn that technique you know uh, from from um acquiring things from unity and then try to work it with it in spark and uh, since uh, while i was learning it that's where the idea came you know like i was also learning depth and so why not why not create a water pump which can just populate water inside your room and you know like your room can be flooded with water or or a liquid or a liquid for that matter like some some sort of liquid so uh, every day the idea is changing now <laughs> initially it was water and now it's a some sort of liquid and there are some some sort of portions into it i'm not sure like where this is going to end but this is going to end for sure so i'm going to submit this uh, i still have 5 4 days to to submit this i guess how can we add a two producer patch object two producer patch object for the same object you can't you can't do that so this is the this is the patch <coughs> <clears throat> sorry this is the scene object and the scene object is uh, creating this producer patch if you want to use this somewhere else you need to like you can't create a sender to it you can't do anything you have to like just drag drag the way you do for other things <laughs> thanks jessica thank you so much yeah it was it was on mute so thanks for pointing that out well um, if you have any more questions uh, anything else let me know um 
one thing that is due is to convert these coordinate systems so maybe tomorrow we'll spend some time to just convert these uh, coordinates from one space to another space and then we'll do that <clears throat> okay i um, think um, i am i am done with the uh, with this one and uh, do you guys have any problems in in um, like if your projects are getting rejected because of the capability problem or like any any issues that you're facing feel free to let me know if you want to talk about it Okay, um, sure, uh, Shaker. Shaker wants to know that, so my question is not technical, but uh, I want to know that your journey and uh, what intrigued me to become a Sparker creator or how did I land a job <laughs> into this? Okay, sure, if that helps, I think uh, it would for sure. Uh, I think uh, maybe I would, not, I would like to know everybody's story as well because that could be inspiring from where you start in I I was a software engineer earlier. I worked for um, different different sort of corporate jobs, and then I did that for five years. And after that, <clears throat> I was not really happy um, in my job. Not happy is, and I was not able. I was not getting enough um, exposure, and I, I thought that my knowledge could be <clears throat> could be used somewhere else. I'm not utilizing my job. Is not utilizing my knowledge. So it was not exciting for me every day to work there. So I left my job and I came across Sparkyard into a hackathon. I found it in a hackathon where people were just coding for like 48 hours. And then I also participated. We were coding for 48 hours. And uh, yeah, I liked it there. So after that, I started, uh, I came back home and uh, I got to know that there was, there was this filters you can make on this tool. So... <clears throat> I started researching on this. I went to the um, documentation and there was like a lot of YouTube videos out there to make you explain of like making simple filters. So I followed I followed all the tutorials. Even some some tutorials were in Portuguese with no subtitles. I still watched, you know, like what what does this have to say, you know? What is this method that uh, this guy is using? So why not like what are the drawbacks of it? Is it a good matter method? So I watched everything. I think I watched all the tutorials were there on the platform, on the YouTube. I did not leave anything behind. I watched everything. I was trying almost everything. This took me about a month. And about a month, I was able to create my, like, publish first filter. And then I did. And I had my first client within, within 35 days, I think 30, 35 days, which paid me a little less. But still, there was a start. And that's, that's where I started. And after that, one client came and other client came. And then, then there was like many clients after a while. And um, it was not easy to score clients at the start because they, I was sending out cold emails. I was talking to, you know, a lot of, uh, I was trying to explain ideas to brands like, okay, this is what, what could be done uh, for you. <clears throat> so in those talks, sometimes they were disappointments. Sometimes they were like a conversion. Uh, okay, let's go with this. So there was like high hopes, low hopes and everything. So <clears throat> it was like a 360 degree development, I think for me, since when I started and uh, until today and now. Like uh, I got good at communication. I got good at um, talking to people. I learned how to pitch to the clients because initially I did not know really. I was just like sending out like, hey, can we do this for you? But now I realize that okay, if you give them information, like this is what could be done, like like a prototype of like a storyboard. If you present your ideas with a storyboard, there are higher chances of conversion. There are higher chances of 
the client would you know it would make sense to the client so in that journey i think lot of learnings were there so um yeah i think um, that that's the journey is the what intrigued me is the curiosity to do something better to do something which is which is right now active so i'm doing this for a while now and i think i'm going to do this for for some some time right now um i like it i like making filters i like working on spark here i like talking to you guys i like teaching about it also i think i learned from the community a lot so i'm just want to give back yeah that's it in the last assignment i had issues with 3d models <clears throat> what is your uh, issue christy um if you can let us know we can address it here let us know what what's any anything in particular that you faced so we can check it I think uh, if you have no questions, then I can teach you something new today. Um, if you have any questions, then let me know. We will will address them. So let me try to. Thanks, Aman. Thanks, uh, Shaker. So let's try to create. Uh, let's say to create glow glow you know like like the something is glowing around something so glow is very important um, detail i think everybody is uh, adding glow all the time <clears throat> i also have some glow in that project if you see that um if you see this project you will see that there's a lot of a uh, lot of glow that you can see this 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 uh, glow in here is also glow in in these particles this is glow this is also a glow these uh, this is this glow is uh, there's a method to create this glow and then you can also create this so let's try to create that that glow um, let's try to understand how to create that so <clears throat> we would need a blur patch we need a blur patch to to make the glow so even the gaussian blur is okay when this blur is okay so this blur we can import it uh remember blur is like a lot of calculations so it has like a <clears throat> limitation like you shouldn't use like too much if you use too much of blur then um that's going to make everything super bad like super laggy as well so to make the glow i'm just going to use a uh, the the diamond again the hard primitive and um this primitive is going to be for the focal distance and uh, i'm going to take this back in here and uh, give it to like a scene object so i'm just want to i just want to access this hard texture and this is how it looks and i'm going to just texture this guy now the error goes away this blur patch gives an error i don't know some sort of so now no whatever whatever glow we create the glow is a is like a is not so detailed texture right this the glow is like a like a flat thing which is just just some light throwing some light okay so it has not it needs not to be detailed okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a not so detailed copy of this heart so first of all make it like a three times bigger and i'm going to create a not so like not so high quality copy of this because i don't need the details so i'm going to create a shader under pass actually just let's just go with the the same one now and then we'll change it later so this is my shader that i created and the the texture i'm passing it here then i'm going to copy this and also copy this and paste it again and pass this after applying the blur i'm going to pass it again and then i'm going to apply the blur again <clears throat> and then i'm going to see that how is this looking now
Do you see any difference from uh, these four values? Okay, so I'm gonna increase the blur more. Now you see that this is quite clear, but this is like a little hazy, okay? And uh, I'm gonna increase this blur again. And this, you can see this is even hazier, right? This is even hazier. So now, since, um, so this is hazier, like, uh, so we are, we are able to create, create that blurness. What I'm gonna do is now maybe make this like 0.5 because we don't need uh, full full render. So we can, this is like, if this is one one that you're taking the, the exact quality of the pixel of the, of the rendering. If I go like 0.5 and 0.5, then I'm gonna actually degrade its quality. So when you degrade the quality when creating the blur, it's actually a good thing. If you do that here as well, then you, you will see that this is gonna degrade it more and more. So this is like super hazy right now, all right? So <clears throat> this is the blur that we got. Um, this is just the blur. And now what I'm gonna do is, so remember, this is my original texture, yeah? But this is a texture that I'm processing like, you know, to create that blood. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend them together. So I'm gonna blend these both together. This you can put maybe at the bottom and this is at the top. And this is my app. And this texture has to go to the, um, maybe create a rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> Now we just want this rectangle to be visible in our scene pine pipeline. So I'm just gonna do that. And that's my render pass. Cool. So if you see this uh, thing, it's pretty glowy. Yeah, so <clears throat> if I use this this add in here, then you can see that this is like a lot of uh, blurness here. But uh, I think we will need more blur and uh, different size of this also. So I can multiply this by by some number. And uh, if I do that, and then if I do the destination, I can give it like three or let's say five and put it on normal. And then you can see there's this outline in the back of this heart now. Uh, if you can see that there's this uh, outline in the back of the heart. This is the glow that, that we wanted. This is the glow that we have. <clears throat> so if you increase it more like 10, then you can see this is more, more and more uh, in the back. You can also like use like 1.5 or maybe three or maybe five. Uh, can also increase the size of this. So how do I do that? We have to use the 2D texture. Uh, if I use a 2D texture, 2D transform pack with a transform, uh, transform texture transform. Then, well, this is my transform, this is my texture, and after modification, this is my new texture. And I can scale it up a little, scale it up a little like this. And, um, you know, can, you can do certain operations with it. And also, um, there are a couple of uh, blend modes that you can use, like different, different blend modes, like overlay as well, normal, add, gives like a similar output difference subtract for now we just keep it to the the normal 
and i think uh, if i use a step uh, in here smooth step i think i can control this boundaries maybe let's try so yeah we could we could control its boundaries a little and not so useful just going to use this so this is to create the glow this is how you create the glow basically <clears throat> what it is is that i use the original texture then i take the texture and if you want to like create like a super bad glow then you can also go like 0.125 0.125 one to five and then you can see that the the pixels are you can see now pixels are there right like it's it's pixelated now so maybe 0 0.25 0 0.25 is better also make it 0 0.25 into 5 also make it 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 yeah and uh, maybe go to like three number So this is how you create the glow, um, glow to something, and that's yeah, it could be like a good detail that you can do. Simple steps, bring out the object, its texture, and then uh, take the same texture and you know apply some modifications, like just blur it out, and then blur it out so much that it becomes like uh, its details becomes hazy, hazy a little, and after that just blend it to the original texture and give it to the like wherever you are rendering it. So that's the glow setup for you. <laughs> so you can create the glow. Um, also, like uh, how how to how to make it like you know a little bit crazy. Just make it a little bit crazy. So now this is my new texture. This is uh, this texture has the glow at the bottom, and the top is the the original texture. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna just do some um, make it like a little crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a delay frame. Um, let's use a delay frame. You know, this is something that you haven't used a lot. So this delay frame always accepts a render pass. So we give give a shader render pass. Give this delay here and also the first texture like this. And um, this is this is something we're not changing it for now. And uh, we have to create a receiver to this and bring it back. So nothing, nothing. We have changed nothing so far. The same thing is the same thing. Um, now we want to change this texture to get it from here. So it's still the same thing. There's nothing changed so far. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to change some things now. I'm going to use this delay frame as a mix. And so I'm I'm gonna pass this frame back to this so that it keeps making some sort of changes frame by frame again and again. So <clears throat> for that, I just uh, I'm gonna pass this now to this. Now you can see there's nothing visible here because all you have is is delay frame and delay frame has nothing. Like you know this has to be has to be something. So this is like if I put it to 0.5, then you can see that. And then both the things are visible. If I put it to one, then the delay frame is not visible at all. So this is hundred percent of this one. And uh, if I put the alpha to this, then you will see that if I make any movement to heart, if I make any movement to the heart, you will see that it kind of leaves its copy. You can see that it kind of leaves its copy as itself. Do you see that it kind of leaves its copy to itself? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a I'm gonna refresh the project. I'm gonna make a little movement to the heart. So to make that movement to the heart, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop animation. And this loop animation should give me a transition. The transition should make this move from um, minus point from 0 0.07 to minus point minus point 0.07, okay? And this has to be zero, and this has to be zero as well. And this is the position of the null object of the heart, not the null object.
Why? Hmm. Okay, so so what it's gonna do is gonna just move it like from from top to the bottom, and then like a sinusoidal manner, and take like full three seconds easily, easily, very easily. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just moving the moving the heart. Okay, um, I'm here right now, and since what I'm doing is that my alpha is always. Is always the my original texture. This is my original texture with the glow. Okay, and if my alpha becomes that every time for every frame, then what it's going to do is going to leave a copy of itself. Yeah? So I'm going to move this now, and then you can see that the the glow glow is also moving with it. You go up, the glow is little up, and then it comes down. The glow goes down. You know, like so. It's like a <clears throat> it's like a additional detail now. To a project, so I'm gonna put it to 0.5. If I put it to 0.5, uh, both the things. If I put it to delay frame now, it's like this. Then uh, it's just gonna show me the delay frame. Where are there are the changes? There's a. It's almost like how we did the the personal segmentation, and there was a movement. So we were kind of like like a frame difference, right? So this is the frame difference that you're gonna see if you put the alpha the delay frame. Uh, but if I put it to 0.01. That means that I, I, all I want is maybe close to what my delay frame is looking at, so I can see some sort of motion blur already. Like I can see there's some sort of, some sort of blur is happening. Um, some sort of, it's almost like a ghost moving up and down is like you know, so that's that's an additional detail that to our project right now and um, looks better. It looks awesome. Uh, we could uh, we could do this to all kind of subjects, and um, maybe you no, know, not care about being it black. And this black color is coming from. Let's find it out. Where are you coming from? Black color. This is where it's coming from. So maybe make it like a white transparent, white transparent. So that also will make sense. Okay, uh, that was the blur for you. Um, you could add more delay frames. You could add. You can create more things. Let's try to create something better than this. So now we are. What you want to do is we want to change its scale. We want to make it like bigger, 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 bigger with time with every frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform the texture. So the texture transform is I'm going to use and. Um, the change transform I'm going to apply to my shader, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to use a 2D transform pack. And right now it's by default. How is it? Now I'm going to give a a little bit of change in the X. I'm going to make it 1.01. When I make it 1.01, before after the passing it this. Uh, the position is point zero one. If I now you can see that this uh, that this additional additional bigger bigger heart I can see after like when it's coming down I can see there's like a bigger glow as it's leaving behind right so. I can make it like 1.05. It's going to be like bigger, bigger, bigger. Like it's almost like it's behind it. So this is something I could do as well. I could also do this to Y as well. So it's going to be like both sides, you know. So that's that heart has like a like a super nice details right now. I can make it to translate into X, so maybe 0.1. Now you'll see that it is actually going all the things into X direction. So maybe 0 0.01, that because that's too much. And uh, don't want to change the scale of it, but just want to go like, okay, like let's say the wind is towards the right. 
so that's how it's going to look and um, we could also do this into y as well so this is like if you do this x and y then it's going to be if you do positive x and y then it's going to be this is positive x and this is positive y it's going to go down so maybe make the y negative it's going to go up and uh, if you don't give the x it's just just going to go up it's just going to go up it's not going to come down like the the glow we're talking about the glow now so yeah i hope that makes sense if you give it a rotation by even a slightest like 1 degree rotation it's going to start rotating and like we will do that the full degree in some time so so these are some things that you can you can work with um, maybe try to learn something out of these uh, maybe some details that you can add to your project and uh, maybe you can add more can add some distortions maybe in here because whatever goes to the delay frame now you know like the first frame went here then it came back okay and it came back uh, then we mixed it we are using mostly the delay frame and then we are using the transform and we scaling it up by 0.1 like a very small percentage when we scaled it up we fed it back to the delay frame so it's going to be larger than the previous one then it's going to go back then it's going to come back then it's going to larger than the previous one so it's going to keep increasing 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 by the time and it will be like so big that we can't even see it uh, for example if you make it like a 1.1 then you can see that how big it's going to get it's going to getting bigger 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 and bigger yeah so pretty good pretty good looks pretty good to me it's like center of it and looks pretty good uh, you could also multiply with some color um uh, where would you do that if you have to multiply it with a the color then uh, maybe the glow can be the color you can multiply with a color with a glow so maybe i'll multiply it here with the color and that i will pass it here this color can be uh, faded yellow you know so now you have like a because because we are multiplying the only the glow not the original object so it's going to add that detail as well maybe use it like a like this color and then we can we can control this to maybe 0.3 so you see more color uh, to 0.5 we'll see more and more color if you just use this then you'll see color and color like that so yeah this is something that you can work with to create uh, something nice and beautiful yeah this one is pretty good point 3 is pretty good and uh, maybe if you multiply multiply it later let's say multiply by 5 and then you'll see that the color is like pretty awesome and the details as well now now you've done this uh, pretty great job with the with the glow and with with increasing the the scale of the delay frame the next thing that you want to do probably is change the material a bit <clears throat> material of the heart a bit so heart material like if you're working with the heart material it's physically based so we can we can make it like a little shinier you know like make it a lot shinier than earlier and um, it don't have to and then i can use emission as well and uh, also the environment texture could have like a little rotation to make it look a little nicer and um, you could play with the opacity a bit everything every small little change will go through the 
uh, delay frame and will you know give you like a great output so so all you have to do is like keep trying keep try to play with like a small small details of the de- delay frame or like what can we do now you know let's let's be quirky and then like just try to add something may give you something may not give you something but the journey is going to per- like definitely teach you something like maybe some errors is going to give you some errors then next time it won't happen because you understand it so yeah i mean think uh, i'm going to just put it to Ninety-nine percent, six percent, eight percent. Okay, and uh, if I make fully rough, there's no doesn't make sense. I'm gonna make it metallic, and uh, this is the normal. The normal is like a very great, um, a great detail that adds. So for for emission, I'm gonna make it super white. and uh, if i give the emission texture as uh, the same texture so now you know like you can add some sort of uh, noise texture to this normal and this and you can add pretty pretty good details to this but for that like yeah some more patches all you need is like few more patches to to create a normal so let's create a normal patch uh, how to create normal patch you can go to the patch library and there are like a couple of normal we also went through this uh, in our previous lectures i'm trying to find a normal patch and it's taking a little bit of time because of uh, internet issues normal sir normal so texture to the normal then you can create a texture and then first create a texture and then create a normal or you can create a height map and then create a normal so let's create a height map and let's create a normal because first one we already did and the second one we did not do it yet so far so what i want to change is the the normal of this guy so i'm going to use the texture for this normal <clears throat> i'm also going to use some uh, other textures like uh, like the cells one maybe the this is the the texture for for the noise and uh, i'm just going to put it to none and none and none um bring it on and uh, so this is my noise and this noise has to be moving i want to move this noise into some sort of some sort of uh, manner so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a vertex uh, transform a uh, vertex attribute guys um, if you have any questions uh, just just write it down because we are about to close the session and i'm just uh, utilizing the time to give you some additional information that you can um use for for your hackathons competitions and assignments so yeah feel free to ask any questions if you have so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a local coordinate so i'm, I'm going to change the change the the, the texture based on the the uv coordinates that means right now i have is the cells okay and uh, the cells i want to make them move so right now the shader render pass shows me the exact texture that i have is like the lot of lot of like this but what i want is texture transform i want a texture transform this te- texture transform this is the texture i want to transform actually we need a sampler we need to sample it first so we need a texture sampler to this is the texture that i want to sample and this is the okay so these are the uvs that i want to modify with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply multiply this with the run time and uh, add this to the original uvs vector 2 and add it in here and multiply to vector 2 and i just want to make them move into the y so i'm going to multiply the x with 0 so right now if i look at this if right now if i look at this this is probably oh, oh, oh excuse me sir 
Okay, this is the UVs and uh, this is the, yeah, this is moving. And again, we're gonna make it to repeat and repeat. So but it's moving in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna multiply with minus one. So now it's moving towards downstairs, downstairs, downside. And um, yeah, this is pretty much it. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this as a, like it's a super white, so I'm gonna make it like a power of two so that it's a little darker than this. And now it's gonna be darker a bit. Yeah, it's a bit darker. If you increase the power, it's gonna be darker, darker and darker. So but I'm gonna like just use this like this. <clears throat> now we have created some sort of some sort of height in the map, you know, like it's this some sort of black and um, white. So this some sort of height map that we're creating. Now we're gonna use our patch height to normal. This is my height map. And this is what's gonna give me the, the texture of uh, the normal. I need my resolution. So if my resolution, where's my, oh, we didn't use that resolution in this project. So I'm gonna bring it here, screen size in here, it's gonna scale in here. And, um, this has given us some sort of details. If you see, this has given us, oh, okay. This has given us some sort of details, but these details are like too much. So I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.1. Now, Not a great, uh, not a great result that we're getting from it. So I think this was even, this was even better. So this is the main idea. Like basically, we use the, we create some sort of noise and we pass that as a height map to the to the this patch, and then that creates normal. So that yeah, that's gonna give us like sort of details. Oh yeah, all we were missing is was the shader and the pass in the middle. So if now we go. It's going to be much better. Yeah. So now we see that some sort of details are like coming, going from that. So I'm going to just make it like five or 10. Yeah, this is not the exactly what we wanted, but uh, this is the main, main path to go around it. If you want to use the details, but if not, then probably also we can use an emission here. Uh, so Heartmat has an emission as well. So if we use this emission to directly like this, then also it gives us some sort of like details on the surface. Uh, maybe not too much, it's too bright, uh, 25. And then I don't need this. Then you can see that there's the emission, there's, there's some sort of emission in there and I can, I can change the scale of this guy, you know, like I can use a texture transfer now before uh, giving it to there. And I can use a 2D transform pack again to make it like a, like a bigger texture. Like right now it's very small. So I can make like 10 and 10. And I can also, yeah, this like, you can keep going, you can keep improving uh, your effects uh, the way you want. So right now, this was the, yeah. This is how you can create a glow. I'm gonna put this project also into the same folder that, that we have so that you can go through these uh, little methods. I'm gonna do this right away, also forget. Well, any more questions, anything? I think we are, we are cross, we've crossed the time. Uh, this delay frame can be used for long exposure. Yeah, it can be. You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I'm glad if you're learning this. I hope you can use it for your projects and get some price, you know, get some confidence, um, bring it home. So I'm going to use this to... this.
All right. Um, yeah, we're done. Hey, Varun, over to you. I hope I'm uh, audible now. Yeah. So, yeah. guys, I have shared the attendance form in the you know chat section. You all can just go and fill out your attendance. And thank you very much, sir, for taking out your time for the community folks. And it was a really wonderful session where you gave an uh, additional insights about all those things in the last half an hour. And of course, your journey was mesmerizing and really inspiring for all the ones who are sitting here and listening to them. Uh, I'm very sure that it's going to boost, you know, boost their mindset to become AR creators in the future. <clears throat> because uh, right now, many of them must be you know, very much confused about uh, whether to go into the SD role or what should we do, how much scope do this AR field is there. So you made them aware well. So I'm really thankful to you. I was listening and it was really very nice experience. So I personally thank you for that. So without any Thanks, delay, sir. now let's wrap up with the session. And for all the guys, uh, you the, today is the last date for the assignment submission, uh, assignment two of your AR. So you guys can please submit it. And for any other doubts, you can keep practicing. And Naveen sir's ID has also been shared. Let me share it again with you. You can connect with him on his mail ID. And stay tuned for the next session where you can live interact with the mentor and just ask your queries. So as of now, let, uh, let's take the leave for today. And we'll catch up with you on the next session. So thank you, everyone, for being such a lovely and patient audience. And of course, thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Warren. Thank you so much.